Hey, this is Nick Green, Hollywood On Trail. Today we're going to be talking about food storage on trail. Specifically, the pros and cons of using a bear canister, an ursac, or a dry bag. All right, here we go. Right off the bat, I'll tell you that I've used every single one of these items in different circumstances, so they all have a purpose. It will really just depend on which trail you're hiking, how much weight you wanna bring, how much food you wanna bring, and the restrictions of that area. Let's start out with the bear canister. This is going to be your safest option. It's gonna be your most durable option. It's also gonna be your heaviest option. Let's start with the safety factor. If I'm hiking in an area that's heavily populated by bears, specifically grizzly country or something like that, I'm most likely gonna bring a bear canister with me. They're extremely safe and really easy to use as well. There are these little latches right here that secure it into place. All you have to do is push in and turn it and the top comes right off. Now to secure it, Simply turn it the other way, obviously, and make sure that the latch goes beyond this little secure button right here. Now, when you have a ton of food in there, it can get sometimes pretty sticky and hard to push in and turn. If you have like food blocking the top area, it could be really hard to push in and turn and then you're spending a lot of time like really using all your might and trying to open it up. But uh, I think the secret is to not fill it up the entire way. You're probably just gonna wanna make sure your food is down a little bit. Which brings me to a good point. When you use these things, you are victim to however big the bear canister is. So whatever food you wanna bring has to fit inside of it clearly. You can't like shove it in and, and really push it down and lock it in like you can with your ursac or your dry bag. This is it. You can't get any bigger, you can't expand. This is what you're working with. To store it at night, all you have to do is simply put your food in, make sure it's closed and beyond the latch, and then put it down. Now you're gonna to wanna to put it away from your tent so when the bears come and sniff around your food, they're not sniffing around your tent as well. So you wanna put it like, you know, I don't know, 100 yards away or something like that. You also wanna make sure that it's not on any sort of incline that if a bear does come and knock it over, it's not gonna fall and keep falling and keep falling and then you've lost your food. If you're camping next to a lake or a water source, you clearly don't wanna put it next to the lake for something to come knock it and then it get washed away into the water. So what I typically do is find two trees or something like that and I stick it nice and snugly in between those two trees so it really doesn't go anywhere. A bear can come and swipe at it, it can bite it, it can claw at it, whatever it wants to do, it's really not gonna hurt these things. I have seen pictures of some bear canisters that are torn to shreds and, and that kind of thing, but I've never experienced anything like that, nor have I ever heard any real stories from a friend about something like that, only seen pictures. So you can let me know. Have you ever seen one of these things destroyed? Because I have not. A bear does not have uh, the grasping ability like a human does, so it can't just come and pick this thing up and walk away. It can't bite it and carry it away. You're pretty secure with one of these things. But as I mentioned earlier, it's really heavy. This is not a light vessel. It's also really big and doesn't compress at all. So it's gonna take up a lot of space in your backpack. I hate carrying these things, I really do. If it wasn't for the safety factor, I would never carry one, but clearly that is important. You pretty much have to pack your bag based around your bear canister. Also, with one of the other vessels, uh, the more food you eat, the smaller it gets. Clearly not the case with this thing. So you could be dwindling your food supply down to like, you know, half a day or something like that, and you still gotta carry around this big monster. Now, this is like a middle of the pack quality bear canister. You can get cheaper ones, and you can definitely get more expensive ones that are made out of like, carbon fiber or something like that and they're they're pretty light but those are going to cost you a pretty penny this one is relatively affordable and uh, durable clearly when you're hiking in uh, some national parks say like yellowstone national park yosemite national park those places that are really heavy in bear activity and a lot of grizzlies and some of those areas as well 
they're going to make you carry these things. The rangers are going to check that you not only have them, but that you know how to open them as well, which you might laugh at and scoff at, but if you don't know how to open it, you won't be able to. So like I said, you push in and you turn it. It's not that difficult, but you do have to know how to do it, and they're going to quiz you on it when you enter their park. And if you don't have one, they won't let you into the backcountry. So that's the bear canister. Moving on to an ursac. Now the ursac is kind of the middle ground between a bear canister and a dry bag. It is made out of Kevlar, which is, you know, what knights or gladiators would wear back in the day or something like that. So it's really durable as well. Not as much as a bear canister, clearly, but still really durable. Bears are not supposed to be able to rip this thing open. I carried one of these things on part of my AT journey at the beginning, and a bear came and stole it, and I'll tell you how. It has a two-part security system. One is this Velcro right here. You stick all your food inside. There you go. You stick all your food inside and close up the Velcro. Then you tighten these laces and Ursac will take you through exactly how they want you to tie it. So you go up and around and in and through and then, and you know, you like triple, double, quadruple knot or something like that. They have a specific way to do it and it works really well. So you are able to have the Velcro system and the tie system. It's really hard to open at that point. Then you take this super long rope here, wrap it around a nice sturdy tree, not something a bear can just knock over and then, you know, steal it. You wrap it around your sturdy tree. They have another way to show you how to tie your knot, which works really well if you tie it correctly. I did not tie my knot correctly. How do I know that? Because I was struggling with it for a couple of days and that particular night I thought, yeah, I think that's fine and it was not fine. I heard rumblings in the middle of the night of, of a bear. I was kind of asleep, so I turned over the other way and ignored it. I woke up in the morning, my ursac was missing, and there was a big old pile of bear scat right where, <laughs> right where it used to be. So I know a bear came and took it. But user error, that was completely my fault. However, I did write ursac and gave them my sob story, and they sent me this brand new ursac so wonderful customer service and you know how i am with uh, good customer service i will be loyal to your brand in any case like i said it is a little bit heavier than a dry bag but not nearly as heavy as a bear canister they sell these in lots of different sizes so you can get a smaller one and you can get a bigger one this is kind of the middle of the road uh size but i think it works really well for a few day trip something like that over the course of a long time, this probably wouldn't be sufficient enough size for like a five, six day food carry or something like that. Um, it does stretch out a little bit more than something like a bear canister, but not, not nearly as much as, as you would hope when you're on a long trip. I'll also say that when this thing gets wet, it gets really heavy. It doesn't dry so quickly because it's made out of this awesome durable material. It doesn't dry as quickly as say a dry bag would. I've never had an issue of water getting inside and soaking into my food, but this thing becomes really heavy when it's wet. That's the issue. Most national parks that require a bear canister do not allow you to bring this instead. Even though Ursac will say that this is every bit as good as a bear canister, for whatever reason, and it might be a good reason, the national parks do not allow you to replace or substitute your bear canister with an Ursac. I, in particular, feel really comfortable using an ursac in bear country. I trust these things. I've since learned how to tie them a lot better. I've learned how to scout for nice durable trees and I will use this in the back country, no problem. Same with the bear canister. You wanna tie it far away from your tent uh, so it, the bear doesn't confuse the food with you. And like I said, just make sure you find a really durable tree. I always like to find a nice snug spot in between two nice durable trees and just kind of slide it in there and make a little more of an obstacle for the bear. Alas, about a month after using this on the AT, I decided, you know what? I think I'm gonna switch to a dry bag. This is a Sea to Summit 20 liter lightweight dry bag. It is very lightweight, probably as lightweight as you're, as you're gonna get. There might be something a little bit more lightweight, but I mean, uh, the, we're, we're talking like an ounce. The 20 liter size is huge and plenty of room for a lot of food, like a week's worth of food or if you're through hiking like, you know, four or five days worth of food because you eat a lot more. These things are conducive with doing a PCT hang, which we will go over in a separate video how to do that. And if you're in bear country or critter country, which is everywhere in the outdoors, you're probably going to want to do a hang because a mouse, a hungry, anything can just like 
rip right through these things. It's not meant to store food. It's meant to store your valuables and not get them wet. So just be aware that when you use one of these things, you're probably gonna wanna hang it correctly so nothing gets into it. However, with that being said, it's waterproof so you can hang it up and it can pour and rain and it's not going to get inside and wet your food. You can manipulate this thing inside your pack to stick it really wherever you want. When the food dwindles, so does your vessel. And I would say this is what the majority of hikers use on the Appalachian Trail. Now, I wanna be honest with you. I used a dry bag for the majority of the trail, but for a lot of the trail, I did not hang it. Yes, there are plenty of places on the AT that have um, already existing bear hangs where you could just attach your bag to it and then like pull it up like you're raising a flag or something like that, or uh, bear lockers where you could just put it inside and then lock it. But in places that didn't have that, I sometimes found myself in the habit of just keeping this in my tent with me, which is a bad idea, I know, but I do wanna be honest with you, it does happen on trail. A lot of people do just keep a dry bag of food in their tent with them. I'm not endorsing it, I'm not saying you should do it, I'm simply saying it does happen. You kinda of like fall into a trap and you become pretty lazy about it. I've since gotten a lot better though. Um, I'll hang this thing or bring a canister or a nurse sack instead, cause the reality is you do not want to be messing with bears, even though sometimes they look nice and furry and cuddly and, and they're cool when you see them. I don't want one coming and mistaking me for food. That being said, when you get good at a PCT hang, they're, they're relatively easy and you can do it in a short amount of time. That's not to say there aren't issues with it. There are plenty of instances where you'll hang this and uh, a knot will form in your rope and you can't get it down. You gotta cut the rope or you gotta really work at it and you're up there, it's, uh, food's up there and you're starving and you know, it's a bad situation. But more or less, once you get the hang of it, you get the hang of it. If you're in a place where there are no trees, you're on a bald or something like that, you can't really hang it that way, what are you gonna do with your bag? So just something to consider. I know a couple of hikers that have multiple AT through hikes in their belt and they have never hung their food ever. They've only ever stored it in a dry bag and kept it in their tent. You know who you are, you know who I'm talking to. In any case, they're still around to tell the tale, but I would not recommend their strategy. Like I said, I've used all three of these things and continue to use all three of them depending on the circumstance. If you use each of these correctly, you'll have a pretty good chance of being safe out there. So they all have benefits, they all have cons. It's kind of up to you to figure out which one you want to use and when. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe so you can uh, keep watching more videos that I make. I love making them for you. Make sure you comment below. I would love to hear, especially on this topic, what you all do for your food storage. I'm sure I'm missing uh, some new contraption that I have not yet heard of. So please clue me in, let me know uh, what's out there. If you wanna purchase any of these to try them out, there are links below that'll take you right to their site. And however you store your food, just remember, if you can't carry it in your pack, or in your soul, you don't need it.